Welcome to another All About Symbian video preview. This time we're going to look at the Nokia N96. The N96 is a high-end N-series handset with a video and a TV focus. As you can see, it's got the same double slide form factor as the N95 and the N95 8GB, but rather than its successor, it should really be seen as assisted device. On the top side, it's got the multimedia controls, the bottom side is the usual keypad. As you can see, there's the usual controls on the bottom here. That D-pad is also a navi wheel, that's a touch sensitive wheel. We'll see that in action later. The other controls are standard affair, including the multimedia key, the S60 key, and of course the software keys. On the side of the device, there's a number of controls, including the volume key shown here, stereo speakers, and a memory card slot. The bottom of the device has the usual power port, as well as a micro USB port. Notable here because it's five times faster than previous N-series devices. At the top of the device has left to right the lock key, a 3.5mm audio jack, also used for TV out, and of course a power key. The N96 has no shortage of multimedia playback controls. There's one set on the top of the device, so we can see them lighting up here. The neat trick is, if you go back to the normal set there around the D-pad, they'll light up, so it's a fade in, fade out thing. A key feature of the N96 is its support for mobile TV. This takes the form of a built-in DVB-H receiver. DVB-H is a broadcast technology closely related to the DVB-T terrestrial technology used in many European countries. As we can see here, it allows the device to receive mobile TV broadcasts. The N96 TV application includes an electronic program guide shown here, including the ability to remind or even record a program. The N96 has 16 gigabytes of internal memory. That should be enough for about 40 hours of TV recording. So in effect, the N96 is also a PVR squeezed into a phone. It's pretty impressive stuff. Of course, this is dependent on having a DVB-8 service in your country. They're still relatively rare and do tend to be restricted to urban areas. As with earlier N-series devices, there's a multimedia menu that allows you quick access to the key multimedia functionality of the phone. You can move around this using the D-pad either in the standard format or using the navi wheel we mentioned earlier. This touch sensitive wheel allows you to move around the carousel one item at a time. The N96 may get the headlines for mobile TV, but it's still got incredibly rich multimedia functionality. Let's take a look at some of that now. Starting with audio, there's the usual music player, radio, podcasting support. There's also going to be internet radio support in the final N96 release. The Nokia Music Store will be available in more countries by the time the N96 comes out in the third quarter. There's the Video Center application for downloading video from the internet. There's also Flashlight 3, which means you'll be able to play YouTube videos in the browser. Also, this is an Engage capable phone. That means you'll be able to play a variety of Engage games. Now let's take a look at the imaging functionality of the device. The N96 has a top of the line 5 megapixel camera on the back with Carl Zeiss optics that should produce some good results. Flash functionality is provided by dual LEDs. Some may be disappointed by the lack of a xenon flash, but on the plus side LEDs can be used when taking videos. Software wise there's a new Photos application, shown here. It effectively replaces Gallery. Photos allows several different ways to view captured images and videos the usual all-encompassing all category, by time, by albums, and by tags, which are applied by the user. The N96 has automatic geotagging. This uses the N96's GPS to embed the location where a photo was taken right into the image file. This little push pin means the photo has been geotagged, and you can select from the option menu, Show on Map. This then opens the Nokia Maps application, and this shows you where your photograph was actually taken. Here's the tag view we mentioned earlier. Tags are applied after an image has been captured and allows for better organisation. The built-in share online software allows you to upload captured images to internet services such as Flickr or Nokia's own share on Ovi service. New services are being added all the time and this software is built into the camera allowing one click upload as well as the photos application. Nokia also improving the desktop sync experience. Here we can see Nokia Photos running on a PC, and this will be compatible with the N96. We briefly mentioned the GPS in the context of geotagging, but of course its main use is in navigation. The N96 has Nokia Maps 2.0. This has both a driving view as shown here. It's much more like a standalone personal navigation device now. But the big innovation is actually in the pedestrian mode. This gives a breadcrumb-like trail when you're walking around. It also has support for satellite images, as shown here, and in general is a much improved over version 1 of Nokia Maps.
However, the biggest change on the N96 software-wise is the fact that it now runs S60 3rd edition feature pack 2. We won't go into too much detail here, look for a forthcoming feature on the All About Symbian website. However, it's mainly focused around making it easier for new users. For example, there's now a central soft key and there's improvement in the way multitasking is accessed, actually encouraging you to use it more and making it more obvious to the user. There are small changes too, like unified messaging, you no longer have to choose between SMS and MMS. There's Flashlight 3 as we mentioned earlier, allowing you to play back most web videos. There's also the Web Runtime Engine, also known as Widgets. This is software powered by typical web technologies such as XHTML, CSS and JavaScript. So that concludes our preview of the N96. As usual, we've only been able to touch on some of the features, there's a lot more to the N96. There's no doubting the N96 is an extremely impressive device very high-end and packed with features. This does of course come at a cost. It's 550 euros before tax and it's not going to be out to the third quarter of this year which does make you wonder what will be out in the meantime. However, at least for the moment this will be one of the most desirable handsets of 2008 